So you want to get out of a bunker. You're in the greenside bunker. It's taking two shots to get out. Nothing more frustrating than that. It's not that complicated, but you do need to understand kind of where to be steep and where to be shallow, right? We've got to use this golf club. It's a tool that's designed to get it out of the bunker. We have an obtuse angle on the back of this golf club, which kind of glides through the sand. You have the added advantage, of course, of using additional loft, which helps you get it out. And we have an acute angle, the one right at the front, that leading edge, which unfortunately makes contact with the sand axe more like a shovel. Doesn't work particularly well. So what does this all mean? It means we've got to have an open club face. Rule number one, right? If you have a closed club face in the bunker, you are going to have all sorts of trouble. You're going to negate loft and you're going to be digging too much. Once you start digging, you're going to be picking. And once you start picking, it's all over. Makes it very, very challenging. So we've got to have an open club face, all right? I would recommend at least eight degrees of bounce, unless you're coming out of very, very firm bunkers, guys. If your bunkers are continually brick hard, okay? Sounds like a bunker project to me. In that case, you probably want to use maybe four degrees of bounce. But for the vast majority of you, you've got a decent amount of sand in your bunkers. I would say eight degrees at the very minimum. Ten probably going to be even better. Twelve isn't going to hurt. We want to take advantage of the bounce on the back of the golf club because it gives us permission to give that sand a good thump. Okay, And that's ultimately what we want to do. So when it comes to having an open club face, guys, the way the wrists work in the golf swing has a very strong influence on keeping the club face open, all right? We want to grip it open before we even put the hands on the golf club. We've got to make sure this toe is rotated to the right, to your left as I look at it, as a right-handed golfer prior to putting your hands on the golf club. So many of you go ahead and just do this, grip the golf club, and then kind of twist it to the right. Of course, that does absolutely nothing. Your hands return to the same position they started. So make sure you pre-rotate the club face open. That immediately sets you up where you're got a chance okay if you're too square it's going to be very very difficult once i set up to the golf ball i've got to make sure that i've got a decent angle of attack into the golf ball most golfers come in too shallow they come in under they try and hit up they try and help the ball in the air so they get stuck on their back foot back here and they start tipping falling back which brings your low point back, okay? So you either hit miles behind the golf ball, or of course, by the time the club gets to the ball, it's already on the way up. So you're blading it or sculling it right into the face of the bunker. So we've got to create a pretty decent angle of attack, a little bit more vertical, okay? So that's how steep's in the golf swing. So we've got the club face, which needs to be somewhat shallow. That's using the bounce and making sure the club face is open. And then we've got our angle of attack, which needs to be relatively steep. Now, ultimately, what we do want to do is make sure that that club face remains open and make sure that when we set up to the golf ball, guys, that trail shoulder, this one right here, doesn't get too low, right? So a lot of people kind of sit themselves too far behind the golf ball. You can see that tilts my shoulders and gets you stuck way back on your trail side. So make sure that you get that trail shoulder feeling like it's up. Okay, that's a very important thing. That's gonna help you get a little bit steeper and help you hit in the right place behind the golf ball. Gripping it slightly open. I choke down a little bit. For every inch I get my feet into the sand, I'm probably gonna choke down an inch, all right? We wanna make sure we make sure those two things counteract each other well. And then we want to get nice and wide because we want to have a stable base, guys. A lot of golfers tend to use their knees and legs too much in the bunker. I think your lower body needs to stay underneath you. You don't really need to be driving your legs to get out of a bunker. The majority of your speed is coming from your hands and your arms. We've got to go ahead and release this golf club in order to create speed. All right, what we don't want to be doing, guys, is bringing that shaft forward because what we'll do if we do that is we'll remove that bounce, if we start to drive forward, that bounce is gonna get stuck up in the air and we're gonna start digging again. So, let's go ahead and hit one. Get a little wider, my handle is down. I'm pushing the handle down to make sure that allows me to hinge my wrist a little bit better. Notice my hands are not behind the golf ball, they're kind of in line with the golf ball. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit one. All right, pretty darn good right there. So you'll notice my legs, guys, very, very passive. You'll also notice that I get my hands underneath the golf club fairly quickly. That means I'm leveraging the club, I'm hinging it to get it up. 
my club face remains very, very open. A great checkpoint here is that when I take it back, I want to be able to almost look at myself on the club face. I come like there's a mirror there. I'll be looking at myself right now. What we don't want to do, guys, is get that club face twisted closed. Again, going to cause all sorts of trouble. Okay. Now on the way through, very much the same thing. When I release, what I do, guys, is I get my right hand feeling like it's working underneath the handle. We've got different release patterns here. What I don't want is a release pattern that turns the club face counterclockwise or rotates it too much. Again, if we do that, we're going to take the bounce and we're going to negate it have the club digging. So we've got to make sure when you hit this golf ball, your trail hand remains a little bit more underneath the handle. We want to keep it under. We don't want to turn it over. So really feeling like I'm getting that right hand feeling like it's way more underneath the golf club. Look how wide I am. All right, right shoulder is going to remain up. Lots of speed. And whether you can hear that thumping sound right there, that was a really good one. Hit one more. So I'm not driving my legs forward, guys. All right, not driving. So I have a lot of people say, well, where do you try and hit in the sand? Well, for me, anywhere from one to three or four inches behind the golf ball is gonna work pretty well if I keep my club face open as it approaches the golf ball. If you turn that club down at all, if you rotate it down and you hit four inches behind it, you're gonna have major problems, okay? So what you gotta understand is the whole point here is to carry some speed because the golf ball is coming out on a cushion of sand. That requires a decent amount of courage, right? Because if we don't have a lot of confidence, the last thing we wanna do is create speed. So I see a lot of people, they tend to slow down. For me, when I hit, my, hit this golf shot, my destination is all the way through here, okay? My golf club's pointing up at the sky. I'm not stopping down in here, okay? Notice when I did that, my upper body didn't go back. So as I'm doing this, a lot of you are gonna throw your upper body back as you do it. My upper body's gonna remain pretty centered over the golf ball. One more time. That one was really good. Let's go ahead and go down the line, show you a little different angle. We've got lots of sand in here, which is kind of, Makes it challenging, right? If you've got lots and lots of sand and you get in and you start digging, oh, does that make it real challenging? So again, pre-rotate the club face open. I'm gonna aim it, guys, pretty much at or slightly right at my target. I'm gonna align a little left to compensate for that. If you line up too far left, you're gonna be swiping across it. So when I say slightly left, if you picture your target's at 12, you know, no more than 11, okay? just a little bit to the left of my target. I know I want to hit behind the golf ball, so I'm going to make sure my ball is a little left of center. I see so many of you play the ball too much in the center of your stance. And then of course you shift onto your left side and you drive the ball too much. So let's go ahead and hit one here. Notice how low my handle is. So I get my handle down. That allows me to get the golf club up. All right, so I see a lot of people that are kind of up here and that puts their lead wrist into what we call owner deviation. Just means it's too bowed. So very, very difficult to hinge your wrist if you're in that position, right? So we're gonna lower the handle, get down to the golf ball. We're gonna have to back up the lower we get. We have to back up a little bit. And then I'm gonna get this golf club kind of up, down, upside down here. Again, I'm looking at myself in a mirror. Let's go ahead and hit one. Keep the legs kind of quiet. Whether you can see that, pretty high and soft. Hear a nice thumping sound as I swung through the golf ball there. So I've got enough speed to carry the ball out on a cushion of sand. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. So when I start my downswing, guys, what I'm not doing is pulling my body forward. See, a lot of golfers get to the top of the backswing and then they drive themselves forward. So what that does, guys, if you can picture a low point right here, it brings my low point forward. And then what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive that golf ball straight ahead of me. I'm not gonna get any height on it. I'm gonna probably hit down almost too much, okay? And you got the other golfer that does the opposite, kind of gets in here and then when they hit, what they do is they throw their upper body back, okay? And that brings the low point too far back. So you're all over the place with the bottom of your arc. So, you know, you really wanna keep your head relatively quiet. You know, for me, all I do, guys, is I look at my shadow and I'll do some practice swings and I'll look at my shadow of my head and I know there that my head really isn't moving very much. I can look down at it right here, all right? And if I draw a line here, as long as I'm coming in maybe one to three inches behind that line, I'm gonna be in very, very good shape, all right? So don't be moving your head forward 
Don't be moving your head back. Let's keep the head fairly quiet, guys. One more. Let's throw this one up in the air. Get my hands down. See how high that is, right? So very high and very, very soft. And that's what we're looking for. So hinging the club on the way back is incredibly important. Again, what happens sort of underneath the waist here in the early part of the backswing is critical. You're pushing down on that handle, okay? You're keeping your lead wrist in a fairly cupped position or an extended position. You don't want to roll the club away and get it into this kind of orbit early. I see that quite a lot. And then on the way through, guys, I'm keeping my lead wrist kind of facing towards me the whole time, okay? I'm still looking down at my left wrist here. I can see those knuckles, which keeps the club face open. And as I swing through, guess what? I can still see the top of my left hand. Again, if I had a mirror here on the way through, I'd be looking at myself in that mirror. So, you know, that keeps that club face open throughout your entire motion, which is exactly what we're looking for. So it's really what we call an extension release pattern. There's very little rotation in this release. What I'm releasing is I'm releasing a little bit more up and under, okay, this way, as opposed to over. That's got a chance. All right, good one to finish on. So I hope that helps, okay? Need an open club face, rule number one. When you set up to it, make sure you carry enough speed. Understand the difference between being steep and shallow and what needs to be steep and what needs to be shallow. This is your shallow right here. I mean, that's a fantastic club designed specifically to hit the ball up, land it softly. Guys, right shoulder, up, okay? <laughs> Don't be hanging behind the golf ball. And then a big one is just draw that line in here, right? And just work on hitting maybe an inch or so behind it. If you're four inches back, it's gonna be really difficult. And watch your shadow, okay? So when I come in here, you can see my shadow. Very, very quiet with my head, all right? Make a huge difference if you do that. Hope that helps. If you have any friends you think this could help, go ahead and share it. Certainly appreciate the support. We'll talk to you next time.